Flick V right here on the Morning Fix. And in this hour, I am joined by Dr. Rilvan Adan Mohammed, the head of the department at Lions Diabetes Care Center. Welcome to the show, first of all, doctor. Pleasure having you here. Thank you so much, Bhagav. Thank you for having me. You're most, most welcome. Now, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. How did you end up getting head of department at HOD? That's, that's a task. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so, I am a medical doctor. Uh, my undergraduate training at Nairobi University. I did my postgraduate training in public health and uh, di postgraduate diploma in diabetes in the UK. Um, moved back home, passionate about managing diabetes, preventing diabetes and diabetes advocacy, taking the word out there that this can be truly prevented and uh, we can avert the vast complication that uh, is being witnessed at the moment. Fair enough. Now, what, what according to you, because diabetes is very much related also to the diet, right? Um, and especially once you have now diabetes, whether it's type 1, type 2. Um, so what, according to you, is the best diet, if there is one, first of all? Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's a good one, if there is one. Uh, so there is no one size fit all. Um, like everything else, um, our, metabolic, our metabolism is different for every person. And even in the management or even for... A person not living with diabetes, um, we all uh, have a different metabolism, we have different uh, genetic makeup, so I wouldn't recommend and say this is a recommended diet for everybody. Um, however, um, there, is, there has been a lot of uh, talk about the best diet recently uh, in the scientific um, uh, journals and the, and the scientific world. And uh, some people uh, recommend Mediterranean diet mm -hmm. as good for your heart life and your diabetes and metabolic life. Um, uh, some recommend a low carb diet and all that. But what I would recommend as the best is what fits you. Yeah. Um, I would advise uh, you to see a specialist dietitian or nutritionist. Uh, have some, uh, meta uh, some uh, investigations done to know um, at least uh, your, whether, first of all, you're predisposed to diabetes, whether you're overweight, whether you're obese, uh, and so that you can know how much you're supposed to work on in terms of your weight loss, if that's what you're working on. Because if you look at people talking about diet, it's mostly in that aspect. Yes, yes. However, diet should be, for everybody, a healthy one, True. To, be, to be specific. And um, depends on what you do, your daily lifestyle. Your calorific intake really depends on that. So that is why, again, apart from the, your metabolic aspect, you need to focus on the fact that uh, what do you do on a daily lifestyle? How much of the food that you're taking do you really need is what you need to look at. Fair enough. Yeah, that's that's something that many of us don't tend to look at. We well, we like something, especially pizza. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deviating the from this. <laughs> but let's talk about the difference between a healthy diet and being on a diet because you did mention healthy diet mm -hmm. and then also how that um, transfers to you know you being obese or you losing weight mm -hmm. and then we come to Indian diet now that is something that is calorie rich yeah. let's just put it that way yes um, so a healthy diet is really a long-term strategy of you um, eating uh, food that's nutritious that is required by your body uh, while being on a diet is more of a short-term strategy, um, like when you sp when you stick to that uh, diet which has some um, which is calorie deficit, you tend to lose some weight, and uh, that is just for that period. Right. And um, so we definitely recommend a healthy, healthy diet, diet, which is long-term and is beneficial for for your health, especially in terms of all the rampant um, conditions, the yeah. non-communicable diseases we are seeing now. Uh, so we would recommend early on from life. So in fact, right now we're talking a, a lot about the life course approach, especially for a lady, keeping your um, your body in a state of nutritional, um, rather eating healthy 
so that you have nutritious foods because all this junk food creates an environment even when a lady is pregnant and thus passes passes on this sort of environment to this child Mm. and later on this child developing metabolic complications uh, related to all these conditions so really a healthy diet is what we 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 profess at this particular moment and uh, coming to the indian diet i think like you've summed it yes up like it's high calorie diet (laughs) a lot of carbohydrates um, what we would advise is probably more of it balanced in terms of uh, some proteins, um, vegetables. And like I said before, depending on your daily lifestyle, the amount of uh, carbs that you need or the calories that you need, the amount of energy you're expending in a day should be able to determine how much carbs you're eating. So probably more focus on balancing it out with the proteins and the vegetables as well. Fair enough. Well, you heard it from the doctor. I'm not saying this. It's the doctor saying this. Go down on your carbs. That's all. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are still in conversation with Dr. Rulwana Dan Mohammed. If you have any questions for her, 0758 is the number to hit us up on. Whether it's about your diet, whether it's about diabetes, all of that she can answer right here on The Morning Fix. For now, here is Darshan Ravel, Zara Khan with Dilhe Divana. Eight minutes to the hour of nine and you're listening to the morning fix on radio 44 100.8 fm in nairobi city you're watching live on radio 44.co.ke and i've got with me dr rilvan adan mohammed the head of department at lions diabetes care center once again welcome to the studio uh, we did speak about diet but now let's speak about diabetes and diet now there are some people who first of all let's let's break this uh, this whole thing that hey I don't have diabetes I don't need to get myself tested when do we need to test is it gonna be every month every quarter half yearly or annually for diabetes maybe you might have your father your grandfather who has it mm-hmm. but you probably are just saying you know what mm-hmm. no I'm, I'm okay yeah uh, I think like you've put it um um, those at at risk, like uh, with a family history, uh, th- so depending on when to test is um, the people who are at risk, high risk, uh, including those you've mentioned with a family history of yep. uh, diabetes. Um, other people who are at risk are the people who are overweight and obese. Um, for the mothers who had uh, diabetes during pregnancy, usually what there's what we call gestational diabetes. Um, and uh, during pregnancy, they have diabetes, but post-pregnancy, uh, the sugar uh, becomes normal. And so if uh, one has had a history of uh, this gestational diabetes, um, they have a high risk of developing diabetes later on. So they should be uh, checking regularly to be able to see their sugars are within normal. Um, and the babies who um, who were born with a birth weight of more than uh, 3.9 kilos, 4 kilos, Mm. are also at risk of uh, developing diabetes. So if you know your birth weight was above that, you should be checking regularly as well. Uh, Those with high blood pressure, uh, those who are uh, smokers, um, chronic alcohol intake also, all these are people who are at high risk of uh, developing diabetes and they should be able to be checking their sugars on on a regular level. Fair enough. And now how does diet, because I know quite a few people, uh, especially given that it's New Year, the first resolution you make is, hey, I'm going to be working out, I'm going to be watching my what I eat, I'm probably going to go on X diet, whatever they've seen on Instagram, or, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Now, how can it affect someone with diabetes, especially given that whatever they're seeing is, as you perfectly mentioned earlier on, that every diet is not going to fit your body exactly so exactly. so how does that affect someone with diabetes then so for people living with diabetes um they're on medication and uh, there are different types of medication and uh, we've seen uh like you've said so many diets all over social media and uh people want to try this because somebody gave a testimonial that this worked for them yeah. and like i said not uh, one size fits all so we've had of the rampant uh, keto diets and uh, and uh, the reduced um, the calorie deficit diets that we have. Uh, so, for example, if a person living with diabetes is on insulin and you're 
and you're and you're restricting your calories and you're on a certain dose of insulin so without the advice of your doctor you go on and just on this diet you have a high risk of uh, and, and bearing in mind that previously you were uh, you're, you're on a high calorie diet and your dosage uh, of your for example your insulin was um, dependent on that and so you did just decide to stay on the same uh, uh, dosage and just uh, go on a calorie deficit you may end up getting very low blood sugars uh, which could be dangerous because right. uh, that dosage was meant to be for a higher calories, so that could be dangerous. And for, like I said, the um, diets all over, like the keto diet, patients, uh, there's some patients who are on some certain form of tablets and they completely restrict their carbs and uh, they can go into what we call uh, euglycemic uh, ketoacidosis. The body ends up producing a lot of uh, what we call keto acids because the metabolism has now shifted from the regular metabolism that it's used to and so as a side effect of this medication so before you a person living with diabetes decides to go on any particular diet i would advise that they speak to their doctor and uh, inform them of this decision that this is what they would want to try and probably uh, the doctor could look at how to go about that depending on the patient's uh, condition right yeah. fair enough so listen to this yeah don't just do something that you see on the internet please consult your doctor they are there for a reason it's not something that you just see something on social media because that's that's something that's happening every now and then we'll talk about intermittent fasting uh, i will i will bring that up as well but for now let's get back into the music here is in our with the sun is up <laughs> Still in conversation with Dr. Rizwan from Lions Diabetes Care Center, head of a department. Now, we did speak about a few of the diets and how they affect diabetes, especially if you also have a family history, then you need to be checking up on yourself. Um, you know, just visit your doctors. Don't start doing fasts just on what you see online. Please consult your doctor before doing them. But let's talk about one such um, diet that everyone is talking about, which is IF, intermittent fasting. This is something that's doing the rounds on social media. You open it and you just see one post at least about intermittent fasting. What, what exactly would that do to your body, especially for a diabetic patient? Also, even if you're not, does it kind of uh, bring in the part where you know you were going calorie deficit or whether you're going low on carbs and all of that, or can you just eat whatever you feel like? Okay, so um, when we talk about intermittent fasting in general, um, we're talking about it, it is a form of calorie deficit because um, it's um, um, you're going without food for s a certain period of time. So um, there are those that are classified as uh, time-restricted eating. I think uh, the common one you see around uh, 16 hours fasting, 8 yes. hours of eating, and 20 hours and 4 hours um, of uh, eating and all that. So the time-restricted eating, and there is what we call the ADF, alternate day fasting. Um, and I think recently there is what is called MADF, the modified alternate day fasting. So it depends on what one is doing. And this is for the general patients, obviously, especially those with obesity and they're trying to lose some weight. Um, again, no one size fits all what works for you. But uh, you notice that when they initially start the, the, the intermittent fasting, they get foggy and they, you know, like groggy and irritable because of you're used to a high calorie and then suddenly you're, this is sort of a sudden drop drop you know yeah. and so there is no that gradual to get your body acclimatized to this so what happens is um for these patients yes they tend to lose weight it has been noted and there are even some studies which are um which have shown that uh, there is reduced sort of inflammation because a lot of uh, obesity and metabolic syndrome uh, all this uh, have a lot of inflammatory process going on in your body so they have noted some uh, some sort of advantage to it in terms of your weight loss obviously which has so much benefits in terms of sleeping in terms of um, uh, the reduced inflammatory processes um, if somebody if one finds what works for them uh, really it is especially for the obese patients it uh, because of the uh, calorie restriction it can aid but uh, again remember what i said about your daily lifestyle your energy expenditure how much energy are you expending Correct. are you living a sedentary 
um, lifestyle. For me, I go sit in my office and patients walk in and I just move around a little mm. and there's somebody who's doing some hard labor mm. and is trying to attempt this. Really, um, you have one has to find what suits them. Correct. When it comes to intermittent fasting and p p patients living with people living with diabetes, you have to be really careful. Once again, like I said before, it is like uh, another form of diet mm. in terms of um, how long can you sustain this? Um, is it um, the healthy lifestyle that I talked about is sort of a long term strategy. If you have a short term goal of shedding some weight and uh, once you reach your goal and you want to go on, probably would work for you that this is for the general patients yes. but for patients living with diabetes again you really need to consult your doctor because you have risk of uh, because of the medications you're probably taking you may net uh, you may end up uh, getting certain complications because now you're going off food and you're busy taking your medication as it was described when you are not on this uh, particular diet so we really need to be careful with that fair enough and now uh, talking about uh, still uh, on diet and diabetes uh, Ramadan's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in the Hindu mythology, there there is a lot of we have a lot of gods. Mm -hmm. uh, so every time there is one god's uh, celebration, there is a fast on that day. Probably mm -hmm. you you eat only once in that day, mm -hmm. or you eat certain kind of food mm -hmm. uh, compared to what you've been eating. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that uh, as a diabetic patient? Um, so, I think. Um, uh, I probably you'll get tired of hearing me say this, but um, again, every patient is different yeah. and um, we risk stratify patients, even with the religious fasts. Um, uh, like with Ramadan, there are those category of patients we tell you cannot fast sure. uh, because of uh, your certain complications that you have, because of the age that you have, because of uh, uh, your, your control of your sugars, how your sugars control has been. Uh, we recommend you not to fast. But again, uh, from experience, most of these patients tend to end up fasting. So we tend to support them. Yeah. And this is when you're in close contact with such patients during these times and even before. So we even do trial fasts okay. with the medications they're on before the certain time, like uh, in Ramadan. And uh, we try and see whether these patients can be able to handle this. But a vast majority are able to fast, but there has to be, um, in terms of uh, their medication, we have to adjust. There has to be medication adjustments because it's not like the usual uh, time day that day it, life. day to day life. Yeah. So for that period, we need to adjust their medications. Mm -hmm. We need to tell them the risks that they are uh, that is available to them when they for people living with diabetes, so that they can know when to ec what to expect, when to expect, and how to avert these risks as well. So they need to have a consultation with their with their physicians yes. way before this fast. Uh, for Ramadan, we recommend at least eight weeks before oh, wow. before the fasting so that we could even have the trial fasts and we see how how we can support these patients to, to be able to fast. A lot of patients are able to fast during their religious fasts, All but right. they need close consultation with their doctors. Fair enough, yes. So you heard it from the doctor. Please consult your own physician before you start this fast. Uh, and then last but not the least, doctor, I want to ask you, what about, you know, the, the, there is that notion um, that, you know, if you start taking medication, uh, for diabetes, then that's it, you stay on it. Have you treated patients who you have, you know, completely taken off medication after they have kind of, you know, after you have felt that they're okay to just be on a particular diet and watch what they eat? Um, or even in the youth, yeah. Uh, do they now, if, if you get diabetes, if, you know, at the age of 20, and then after that, like, you know, the entire life you'll be on medication, has that been the case or no? Um, so, uh, Probably I should mention from the outset that um, there are different types of diabetes. We have what we call type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Yeah. So for type 1 diabetes, these are patients who completely lack the hormone insulin, which usually regulates the sugars. And for these patients, uh, their only treatment is injecting the insulin, and insulin is only an injectable form. So for these patients, they need to go on lifelong insulin or probably if they get a stem cell transplant and able to produce their insulin, that could be good. But uh, the, for the type 2 diabetes patients, these are patients who initially have what we call insulin resistance. They have the insulin, but there is some resistance to the insulin. Right. However, these patients, uh, if for 
um, if they've had diabetes for a long time, they tend to get insulin depletion as well. Okay. And so they may need insulin. Okay. So yes, there are patients who we've gotten off medications. Wow. And these are patients who mostly have a lot of insulin resistance. So for a, ki- for a patient who's, who, who has been living with diabetes for a long time, there probably is uh, the potential risk that this patient has already depleted their insulin reserve. So they, yes, they are type 2 diabetes. Uh, but they may not be a candidate for what we call diabetes remission. So it's something that's uh, currently a hot topic in diabetes, um, in the diabetes world, diabetes remission. And uh, diabetes remission occurs, uh, like you said, in the younger population with type 2 diabetes who are having insulin resistance. So when they go on uh, probably a specific um, 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 diet that works for them with a calorie deficit, they tend to go off the medication and uh, um, we follow them up quite closely. So just going off medication for one, two months, I would not classify you that your diabetes has gone into remission. Yeah. Six months to one year and you've been off medication, probably I'll, I'll, uh, I'll probably say you've gone into remission. However, if um, you go in back to your old calories uh, that you've been taking, you tend to go back on medication as well. So, okay, it's, so uh, you need to watch. Yes, you need to watch. So I should mention that diabetes has no cure, hmm. uh, but we can put it into remission depending on the patient again. So, and it requires close follow-up because you can't take medication today and say, so can I now stop? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So you've heard it from the doctor. Thank you so much uh, for coming by. And uh, it was it was wonderful chatting with you to get to know about diet and diabetes as well. That is Dr. Rilwan Dan Mohammed, the head of the department at Lions Diabetes <laughs> Care Center. Thank you so much once again. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.